Rub up your engines! Now, I know a lot of people are afraid of electricity. They can't see it. They don't understand it. So I'm going to explain it very simply how it works in modern cars and stuff that you can easily do yourself. This is an electrical tester. It's an Autool BT260. Costs like 49 bucks. And the advantage is it's got the super long cord on it. It just keeps going and going and going. Then it connects to the battery on your car. Since it's so long, you can go anywhere to test, even the back of the car. So you don't have to go around looking for sources of power or having a battery operated tool that when the batteries go bad, you got to go get batteries, you're worried are they low. This connects directly to your car's battery and it can work just about anywhere. Speaking about your car's battery, it's only 12 volts. Not going to hurt you. You can put your hand on each side. 12 volts does not hurt people. Now, if you've got a modern hybrid car or a pure electric car, yeah, then you're dealing with dangerous stuff. They can go anywhere from 200 volts to 400 volts. You don't want to mess around with that stuff without a lot of special equipment and gloves. But 12 volts is not going to hurt you. The other way you can hurt yourself would be if you had metal in your hands and that metal connected the ground circuit to the power circuit like putting metal from the positive to negative cable. And if your hand's there on that metal, it's going to get real hot and burn you. But as long as you keep, don't wear rings that can short things out, have bare naked hands, you can't hurt yourself with 12 volts. And so now we're talking about 12 volts. What exactly is volts? Well, volts is the potential measuring of energy. We'll check the positive terminal. And as we stick it on, it gives us a reading, which in this case is 11.912 volts. This battery is a little bit low because the car sits an awful lot. That's potential energy. Your entire car, the big wires in it, have 12 volts of positive electricity. The ground wire, the battery, which is negative electricity, connects to the frame, connects to the engine. In order to have flow with direct current, you need a positive source and then a negative source of ground so the electrons can flow. You always need the entire path, as I'll show you here. Here's the tester. I'll touch it on the engine to see if it's grounded. As you can see, it's beeping and it shows green zero volts. That means it's grounded correctly. If it wasn't grounded correctly, the alternator, I took the ground off of it. It's got zero volt too, but you see it's not green. That means it's not grounded. It has to be green to show that it's grounded. You test the ground, it shows it's green and zero. That means the ground's good. If you lose either power or ground, a device won't work. You can test it very easily with something like this. This is voltage. What about amperage? Well, amperage is the actual current that's flowing in a circuit. And as we go to the fuse box here, you'll see they have numbers. This is 15. Now, that doesn't mean 15 volts. It means 15 amps. And that particular 15 amp fuse is for the headlight. It will allow the headlight to take up to 15 amps of power. If it takes more, that's more than the circuit is designed for, and it will blow the fuse to save any damage from occurring. And just like volts, you can't see amps. That's where you need testing equipment. Now, this cute little tester I got it on Amazon for 13 bucks. Here's how you can test the amperage going to any circuit. It's very easy. You just go to the circuit, pull the fuse out, out it comes. Then we place the cute little tester in there, snaps right in. Now this requires a special tool. I like these non-contact ones because you don't have to take anything apart. It makes it a lot easier than taking it apart when you unplug the battery and you put testing devices in between, you're resetting the computer. This doesn't reset anything. All you're doing is measuring the current that goes through. All you have to do is get the tester turned on to amps, put it in the middle. It will read what the draw is. And in this case, you'll see the current that's flowing is zero amps. There's none. Now that's what you want to see, because in this case, that's the headlight fuse. The headlights aren't turned on. So let's turn the headlights on. Now that the headlights on, let's read the amp reading. In this case, it's now 3.85 amps, which is the power the headlight is using. Again, we'll turn the headlights off. Now they're off, and the amp reading has gone back to zero now because the lights are turned off. So these little clamp-on ammeters, this particular one's about 70 bucks, work great to find out 
what's going on in your system. If you find out that you turn the switch on and there's no current flow, you know, there's no power going through the system. You test the switch, you test the wiring, you know, for some reason, there's no power going through it. Or, the opposite thing, let's say the headlights are turned off. And when they're turned off, this shows current flow. That means that there's a problem in a headlight system where they're draining electricity even with the headlights turned off, which would make your car battery drain. The car wouldn't start in the morning because it would lose power somewhere in that system. These are so great for figuring out where there's a problem in the system. Now you could make one of these with pieces of wire and little clips if you want, but hey, this thing was $13 and it even comes with a little safety fuse on the side. So if there was a problem, rather than destroying your car, it would work just like the original fuse you pulled out. It protects the circuit. Hey, for 13 bucks, hey, I'll buy one of these. Just realize most modern cars are two different sizes. There's the little ones like in my Toyota, and there's the bigger ones. Just get the correct one for your car. And I mean, if you got more than one car, heck, you might as well just buy one of each like I did. I mean, they're only 13 bucks a piece. Now, as for this tester itself, it really is great because it does the readings. When you push it on, it does the voltage reading all by itself. But when you push the button, then it sends power out and that is what's called load testing then you're checking it under a load which makes a big difference in electricity because even in a low voltage system like a car it's a 12 volt system you can have a minor short that if you just test the electricity by just sticking it on it might show there's 12 volts in there but it could easily be a minor short one of the connectors is corroded or loose and then when it gets more power it won't work right that's where you push that button and it sends the full power you read the reading if you see the reading is 12 volts on the battery but then you check a circuit and it goes down to way under 12 9 10 or even less then you know that system has a short somewhere draining the electricity just tested it by pricking it in when the circuit isn't energized much doesn't mean much but when you energize it it's called a load test. And when you load test it and the voltage goes down, you know there's a problem in that circuit. You can use this really quickly to do it. Now, when I was a younger mechanic, they didn't have things like this. They had test lights and stuff. And they had big meters and stuff you could use. These are much better. But back then, things were simpler. Cars didn't have computers. So everything in a car was pretty much 12 volts. But realize the computers, for some reason, they kind of internationally run on five volts. My phone's five volts, and almost all the computer sensors on modern cars run a five volt reference signal. Not 12 volts, but five volts. And that's where a tester like this comes in really handy because it's auto ranging. You can see it's zero volts. Well, this particular one goes from zero volts to 24 volts. It'll measure them all. Let's say you're testing a computer circuit and you check it, it's not gonna hurt that computer circuit because it's auto ranging. So it will show five volts on it if it's working correctly. Now some of the older testers, if you were using something where you connect the negative to the battery and then you started testing computer circuits, it would run 12 volts through them and fry them. This doesn't work that way. It's auto ranging. If you're working on a wire that's a computer wire sensor, say, that has five volts, it'll show five volts. It won't destroy it by sending 12 volt ground to that system. It will test it accurately and not wreck anything. So you don't have to worry about shorting out expensive computer systems. That's a big worry people have. I know some mechanics that were excellent mechanical mechanics, water pumps, engines, transmissions, they were great, but they were afraid of electricity. They thought, oh, I'm going to short something out. Don't be afraid of it with a tool like this. It's auto ranging. It'll show you the actual voltage of the system you're working on, and it won't wreck any of those sensitive computer circuits. And as long as you don't own a hybrid or a pure electric car, don't worry about shorting yourself out working on a car with one of these. They are pretty much foolproof. And if you notice, I'm normally not a fan of plastic stuff, but in this case, Plastic is good because since this is all plastic, you cannot short things out. You can't short power to ground because if you have this on power and this touches ground, it doesn't matter or vice versa because it's plastic and it doesn't conduct electricity. If you look closely, you'll see the only part that's metal is the very tip. Even if you touch this part here, 
to ground in this part to power it won't shut out because this is painted and insulated and has rubber and plastic coating where the only bare metal part is the end it's a very well designed instrument and yes there's more expensive ones out there that I've used in the past but since this one is 49 bucks and the fancy one I had was well over a hundred bucks I'm happy with this because I've been using this one for a few years now and it hasn't broken yet with the fancy ones that I had over the years I've been through four different ones. Ten years from now, if this one's still working, I'll really be happy with it. But it may be made in China, but it's simple technology, and it's made quite well. I dropped this thing a bunch of times, and it's still, I even left it out in the rain one day and forgot about it. Dried it with a hair dryer, and it worked perfectly fine. So now that you know more about voltage and amps in modern cars, hey, maybe you'll fix your car the next time it has an electrical problem. And since this is Mechanic Monday, I'm giving away one of these auto tool testers to have a chance to win just place a clean non-offensive comment on the youtube comments below and a winner be chosen randomly by computer to be able to test their own vehicle's electrical system so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell